Statistics and Excel, normal distribution, calories, example, part number one. Get ready, taking a deep breath, holding it in for 10 seconds, looking forward to a smooth, soothing Excel. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet. But if you do have access, there's three tabs down below. Example, practice, blank. Example, in essence, answer key. Practice tab having pre-formatted cells so you can get to the heart of the practice problem. The blank tab, blank worksheet, with just our starting data in it so we can practice formatting the cells within Excel as we work through the practice problem. If you don't have any starting data to practice with, you can try going to resources such as Kaggle.com or create your own practice data set by going to the data tab up top, analysis group, and the data analysis. If you don't have an analysis group, you can usually turn that on in the options under the file tab as we have seen in prior presentations. Let's go on down to the example tab to get an idea of what we will be doing. We've got our data on the left. We're gonna have our calorie counts by date, being able to then sort our calorie count once we put a table around it. We're gonna do some familiar stuff we've seen in prior examples now with our calorie data. One of the differences, however, between this example and prior examples is that when we think about the calorie count, we're looking at fairly low units of measurement. So when we actually plot our graph, we can do it calorie by calorie, but when we want to compare this information to our actual count, it is often useful then to kind of group some of this information together. So we'll put it into buckets, which will be one of the distinguishing factors of this problem to prior problems. So let's go on over to the blank tab and take a look at it. I'm gonna delete this here and let's do our standard formatting. Now I'm gonna format the entire worksheet which will mess up the dates here and uh, then I'll fix the dates. So I'm gonna note that that's gonna happen. I'll select the triangle, right click on the entire worksheet and then format the cells. Let's go to the currency and negative numbers bracketed red, dropping it down with no uh, dollar sign and we don't need the decimals either. So let's remove the decimals. Okay, so you can see the date field has now gotten messed up. I'm not worried about that, I'll fix that here. Before I do though, home tab, font group, embolden, and then I'm gonna select column A and change the date field. So home tab, number, and then I'm gonna go to the number dropdown and just bring it back to that short date field. And so there we have it. I'm gonna put a table in here now so it'll be more easy for us to sort the data. So I'll click anywhere in this set of data, home tab, insert. I'm gonna put a table in it. Now, I don't think there's any blank cells in our data. So I think the table, the dancing ants should be doing their dance around the whole worksheet, which is down to, four, to uh, 458. And there it is. Let's just double check that that is indeed the case. If I scroll down, boom, table has got all of the data within it. Now we could sort the da data by date now, of course, or we can sort it by the calorie count. And so we might go from low to high, got those zero days in there. We got from high to low, those days where we uh, had a lot of calories for whatever reason. Let's keep it there because we can see the numbers here. That's where we have to work. That's what we have to work on. Any case, I'm gonna make column C a little bit smaller. And let's do some of our standard calculations. We'll do the mean, we'll do the standard deviation, which I'm just gonna put SD, the median, and let's try the mode and see if the mode works as well. I'm in the mood for some mode. Let's go ahead and uh, then 
do the mean, which is going to be equal to the average tab. We're going to select all of the data. I'm just going to do that with the drop down because it's in a table format, making it nice and easy. The dance and ants doing their average dance. Not that it's average. Their dances are all above average in terms of how well the ants actually dance. How they move their hips is just astounding if you were to zoom in on it. But average calculation, that's what like the rain, like when the rain happens, but this time the ants dance made the average calculation. So then we go to the standard deviation, the standard deviation, double clicking on that. And this is gonna be for the population. So I'm gonna select the entire thing again. And now they're doing their dance. They looks like the same dance with those dancing ants, but this is the standard deviation dance which would look totally different if you zoomed in, as you well know, because otherwise, how would Excel know if they did the same dance? How would Excel know to do the average calculation versus the standard deviation? Let's do the mo the median. The median is the one in the middle. So we'll start typing that in. I'll select the entire data again. Now they're doing their median dance, hitting the one in the middle. I think it's got a little Rocky Balboa theme song in it uh, when they dance to that one because because of in honor of Rocky's wanting to hit the one in the middle, hit the one in the middle. And this is the mode, the mode. Let's do a single mode and select the entire thing and boom. So if we look at our data, we can say, okay, the mean is pretty close to the median, which is an indication that we might have something that deals with a, a bell type curve in terms of our data. And therefore we might want to plot an actual bell curve for more predictive power about it. The mode is pretty close as well, but remember the mode is main, is saying that one number shows up multiple times. And because calories are so small in units, uh, then then it you know it might not be the case that even though we have something that's kind of in the has a mean in the middle and has a bell shaped curve that the numbers are exactly showing multiple numbers of the same number, right? Because because they're pretty small units of calories. But in any case, the mode's fairly close as well. So we're thinking the standard deviation might work. You would assume just based on the information we're looking at that a normal distribution might fit due to the fact that if we're counting calories, usually the calorie count's gonna have to be somewhat consistent and vary from day to day if someone was gonna maintain some some average of, of weight, you would think. There should be some relationship, you would think. So let's do our, our what we're gonna do now is plot this. We're gonna say, okay, I'll plot the X and the P of X and say, we're going to plot this out. And so I'll select this and make it black and white home tab, font group, bucket drop down, making it black, making it white. And then we will center it. Okay. So, so now the question is on, on the calories. Notice it's, we had from zero. See, this is where the issue comes in. We had from zero going all the way up to uh, 4,000 calories. So you can see that's if we do it calorie by calorie, that's a lot of units. Now it's kind of nice to put all the calories in there, all the singular units, because then when we do our P of X calculations, we'll, we'll get the thing to add up to basically 100 and we'll have a nice smooth graph. But when we do comparisons to our actual data, we might want to have some other uh, method of doing it. So I'm gonna so I'm gonna start out saying I'm just gonna do it calorie by calorie. But the question is how far down do I need to go? So let's say we're gonna take the number of deviations, number of standard deviations. Let's say we're gonna go four below and four above. That means we'll have a lower x and an upper x. So the lower x is gonna be equal to we're gonna have the mean, the middle point minus the standard deviation times four. Standard deviation times four less than the mean. And note what happens, we end up with a negative number. Now in practice, you would think you can't get a negative number, it, it would stop at zero. But in theory, the bell curve goes on forever. So I'm gonna just keep that for now. You could change it to zero, but I'm gonna keep it for now because when I plot my curve, if I, if I have four standard deviations, I've, I can get basically all of the data and it should add up to like 100%, right? And on the upper side, I'm gonna say, this is gonna be the mean plus the standard deviation times four. So there's the upper side of things. Okay, so then we're gonna have, uh, uh, let's do this, let's do it then. So I'm gonna start then at a negative, which again, is funny, weird, 
uh, weird, weird. So, so if a negative one zero six nine, and then it's going to go to negative one zero six eight, and then so on and so forth. So let's see if the system, if I select those two, can count that out. So then it goes down to to seven. So I could just count this down uh, to 5,000. It might also be useful for me to do a sequence calculation, which might be a little bit easier. So I can look at the difference between these two. How many are there? We've got, we've got uh, uh, 6,517. So let's try it this way. Instead of me copying it down, which we could do, I could say this equals sequence. And then I'm gonna say uh, the rows that we want are gonna be this many rows, 6517 plus one. Actually, no, not a plus one. We'll keep it right there. And then comma. And then the start point is going to be, this is gonna be the start point. And let's close it up. And then boom, and it didn't do it. K pos O. I put the start point, I should have put columns. So I need two commas here and then the start point. So now the start point, because there's just one columns. All right, then boom, and it counts it down. So if I hit control shift down, I should end at five, four, four, eight. So it's at five, four, four, seven. So let's add, let's, I should have done the plus one. I, th I was right the first time. Let's do that uh, plus one and then boom and then control shift down. So now it goes down to five, four, four, eight. Perfecto, just like Mundo would do it. I have a friend named Mundo, he's a perfectionist. So whenever I do something like really well, I say perfecto, just like Mundo would do it, perfecto Mundo. So then I'm gonna say that uh, we can do our norm.dist calculation equals norm.dist. So the X is just gonna be that X Again, it's negative, looks funny, but we're gonna put that in place because, because that'll plot the, the bell curve out for standard deviations, comma. The mean is gonna be this mean over here. I'm gonna select F4 to make it absolute dollar sign before the E and the one. So when I copy it down, it will copy down. The standard deviation, the 815 F4 to make it absolute dollar sign before the E and the two, comma. Let's make it uh, not cumulative which means false or zero is what we need to put in. I'll put a zero because it's easier, it's faster. Let's percentify it before copying it down. Home tab, number group, percentify so we can recognize, add in some decimals, nothing there. We're gonna copy it down by just double clicking on that fill handle. And then if I say control shift down, it goes all the way down to the bottom. And there's there's some activity, there we go, in the middle. Now notice a lot of the numbers are quite small because we're going, we're going calorie by calorie. Let's add a couple more decimals. I'm gonna select the entire H column, home tab, number, adding a couple more. What, you went the wrong way. K possible percent, adding a few more decimals. So you can see we have pretty small numbers for any any one of these uh, due to the fact that when we go cal one calorie at a time, we're finally getting into the positives that, that if you're looking at for that exact number, you're gonna get a pretty small number. But the benefit of going one calorie at a time is that if I select all of this data, if I go control shift down and then we sum it up, this will be the total, and I say alt equals to sum it up, then it adds almost to 100%, right? Because we're at four standard deviations on the low and the high. Now that double check number is nice because that's also one of the reasons why sometimes it might be useful to plot the negative numbers, even though in practice, you're not gonna have in real life negative numbers on this scenario, just because that gives you that kind of verification number and it'll plot the graph, a nice bell curve tailing off to that side as well. You could remove the negative numbers uh, if you would like to uh, as well. So I'm gonna make column F a little bit thinner. So then if we were to plot this, I'm gonna put my cursor on P of X. Well, let's plot, let's plot the calories first. I'm gonna put my cursor on the calories, control shift down, 
Let's make a graph of that. I'm going to say control backspace to go back up, insert, and let's go to the charts. Let's go to a just a histogram. Let's go to a histogram. And there's our data. So that's another indication here. This is giving us our buckets of calories, zero to, to 370, 370 to 740, and so on. It looks like we're kind of in the middle here. This is our average count, 1,850 to 2,220. And then we had a count of, in that bucket, 120. So you can see this looks somewhat symmetrical, somewhat look, looking like a bell curve which would justify us basically doing, you know, this bell curve type of analysis with this kind of data. So we have that, let's plot this one. So I'm gonna say control shift down on this one. And I'm gonna say shift up, so I don't pick up the total. Control backspace to get back to the top before we insert the graph. Insert tab, charts. This time we want the bar chart, selecting the bar chart and boom and because there's so much data it almost looks like an area graph right because we did it cell we did it cell by cell it almost looks like we entered uh an area but if you click in here you can see it's actually it's got these bars in there but the lines are so small because it's calorie by calorie that it looks like we entered an area graph on it so there is that it looks quite uh uh bell shaped so we're gonna say okay that's the shape of that one. And then uh, we could say, let's compare that to our sample. And this is where we're gonna kind of reveal one of the issues that we have with this particular system of going one calorie at a, at a time. So if we were to compare this uh, to our sample, there's a couple different ways we can do it. We can, we can then take our actual data here for the calories and, uh, and then we can put those into buckets and take a percentage of the total of all the counts that we had. Or I can try to say, let's take our percentages here and, uh, and multiply it times the count and then compare that to our calorie count. So in other words, let's take a look, let's take this data right here and multiply it times the count of the data over here. So I'm gonna say, let's do a count of the data. This equals uh, count and then brackets i'm going to select all of the data and so and enter so there's 457 counts that we have over here so if i multiply the p of x p of x uh times the count times the sample count and let's make this black white and wrap it maybe i'll double i'll put a space here and then maybe center it then then that should give us then the probability of each of these numbers coming up if we had a count of 457 based on our actual bell curve not not the actual data so we're going to multiply these percentages times the sample so if that was the case what would we expect to happen well i'm going to take this number i'm going to select f4 on the keyboard to make it absolute because i'm going to copy it all the way down times the percent which is very small here and enter now if i if i select that i'm going to add some decimals to it so let's make it quite long you can see it's a very small fraction of a number now obviously when we have an actual sample of 457 there's no way that I'm, I'm going to get a fraction of a count, right? It can only be one or above on how many times I have a count. So that's one of the issues when we try to compare this. So if I double click going down, you can see our numbers are quite small. And the problem is in, in the actual counts, right? We would have uh, actual whole numbers uh, when, we, when we count them. So that's why we might need to kind of group these together into basically buckets if we wanted to kind of do a comparison, right? So if I compare that to my actual data, let's compare this to the actual data, actual frequency, frequent, frequency. Not sure if I spelled that right. I'll check it in a second. Home tab, font group, black, white. Let's wrap it and let's uh, center it. And now we'll do a frequency count 
which is going to uh, put each of these into the buckets, uh, a bucket count. So in this case, it would have everything up to and including uh, 68 and over and above 69. So it's gonna be equal to frequency tab. This is an array formula. We'll select the entire data on the left and then comma and we'll pick up the X's, which is our bends, control shift down, shift up, control backspace to get back to the top so we can see what is happening here. I'm gonna close it up and then enter. So now if I say control shift down, you can see it takes it all the way down to the bottom here. I'm gonna to try to shore up this last bit so that it doesn't uh, pick up, so it doesn't spill all the way over. So uh, let's see if I can take this up one and then enter. And so now it spills down. Boom, control shift down. And it's still going all the way down to here. Let's try it again. I'm gonna double click on this, go all the way down to the bottom. And I'm gonna pull this one up to right there and then enter control shift down okay so there we have it now if i if i sum this up i say alt equals now we've got the 457 so the count is there so the issue then though is the fact that i can't get a count of course it, let's add some decimals to these home tab number adding a bunch of decimals right it's not going to help because i'm not going to get a count that is going to be less than one right i can only get a i can only get a count that is is going to be one or above so even though i've got these fractions based on the bell curve you're only going to get actual numbers here and so here's you can see sparsely uh ones that are sparsely arrayed here when we're counting only calorie by calorie because there's so many uh, options when you're counting one cell at a time. I can also compare, if I wanted to compare to the percentages, I can take my actual count divided by the total. So I could do this equals this divided by the total, control shift down, which is that 457. I just want the 457 and then F4 to make it absolute and then enter and then make that a percent home tab number percentify adding some decimals and double click that down so that's something we've done in prior presentations but again it's not going to it's not going to be comparable all the time because i i'm only going to have certain items that have a count and there's going to be all of these places where i don't have a count because we're going calorie by calorie so whichever way we do it we run into that problem so this is going to be a percent of total so let's make this home tab font group black white wrap it and center it so next time what we'll do is we'll say okay let's see if how we can kind of put this this information into buckets for, for possibly so i can compare it to the to the actual count we'll take a look at that next time